The celebrity's Egyptian army faced their enemy, the Seleucids, across a flat and featureless desert battlefield. The only discernible landmarks are an oasis and placed amongst a few rocky outcrops, a small watchtower. Neither of these offer any real strategic value. But will the team realize this? It's a pretty nothing special place in strategic terms. It's flat, it's open, it's on the sea, the Mediterranean. And yet, over centuries, it's been the site for battles many, many times. Several times in the ancient period. Then you get Napoleon's troops coming that way in 1798. You get British troops coming that way in 1917 to take Palestine from the Turks. And then you get the Israelis fighting a battle within a mile or two of this same spot, again in 1967 when they invaded Egyptian Sinai. So it's a kind of strategic crossroads because it's at the choke point a narrow piece of land where Africa meets Eurasia. Can we look across to the to the right? This is going up towards here. Now. Yeah, it's going up towards there. So that's the that's that outcrop. You yeah. see, it's fairly. It's not that steep. It's fairly featureless, no. isn't it? Really. And those hills at the back. Can, can, you, we, go... can we go right to where the? Yeah. Keep going, Adam, if you can. Right over, just to see how high they are. As far as the team is concerned, they're groping for some significant terrain feature to help them understand the, the ground they're going to fight on. But as you see, the team is looking at the boundaries of this battlefield, not at the battlefield itself. When you look at this battlefield, there's nothing to see. This is the thing. The, we're well matched. The terrain doesn't seem to actually amount to much. I mean, it's going but to just be down to... they've got a watchtower, that is, as you say, really important. Yeah. So if we could do a sneaky-beaky around the side, yeah. Try to and take that out, and then we, we can need watch to take the that out. From there we, we need to take that. that out. I actually disagree. I think the, the thing to do is 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 fight them, fight them where we find them, as we yeah. find them, rather yeah. than rather than yeah. extend our line unnecessarily to, to do that. I agree with what Al said about we can see the terrain uh, and we can see how flat it is, and there's not much um, benefit from the, the high ground as we discussed earlier. Despite Kate's fixation with the watchtower, the team realised the need to fight this battle on the flat. Let me take you on to part three of your briefing, where you can find out everything you need to know oh, right, okay. about your own troops. <laughs> what happens here is our two lieutenants, and by the way, how do we decide who was in charge and who wasn't? I think the generals are meant to be the four guys and they thought they should have a woman. And, uh, they're either being really chivalrous or no, I'm no, the... entirely <laughs> ungallant. <laughs> I think so. I think you two yeah, just seemed we, more we historically knowledgeable. And we, fi we figured that uh, it's your, your show. But yeah, we're going to work as a team, huh? Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. The only thing more except for male ego for it to go wrong is if a woman gets it wrong. <laughs> I'll take <laughs> so, it. I want it. So, so no pressure there then, yeah. Kate? No, nothing <laughs> at all. All right, Lieutenant, uh, Ricky and Raji, if you go down and uh, join our technicians at the front, each lieutenant will control half of the Egyptian army, and their first task is to ascertain which troops each control. At this stage, it is crucial that the team discovers everything they can about their troops' strengths and weaknesses, if they're going to be effective in battle. What you can be doing now yeah. is, again, uh, using Adam Asking at the big screen, uh, start plotting with your blocks. Uh, the rough shape of your own forces, and you get more information all the time from your lieutenants. Where Feel free to shout going at so them. fast. Um, right. I'm controlling this uh, lot on the right. Okay, that's the general in his little formation, but he's very strong, so he's in, he's very important to us. Oh, the right of him now is a formation of elephants that we have, eight elephants, right. and then behind them, yeah. In fact, uh, why don't we? With the aid, they're the phalanx. They are the big, long pikes that the Egyptians use. That's, the, that's your heavy infantry, isn't that's it? That's your, yeah. your heavier infantry, is this mob here. We've got four lots of that. We're going towards the javelin throwers now. So there's different kinds of infantry within the infantry. So we've got javelin, javeliners here. Al has spotted that their Egyptian infantry comprises archers, spearmen and tribesmen, each effective at a different range. But will the team use this knowledge when it comes to deploying their troops? And another three phallics at the back. Is it, are you saying phallics or phalanx? Because if it's phallics, we're in trouble. Should we call them heavy, heavy artillery from now on? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then at the back, uh, light cavalry. Back in the old days, Alexander the Great used a combination of the pikemen and the cavalry. He'd use the pikemen to fix his enemy and then use his cavalry to strike the enemy. The problem was that because Alexander's political descendants didn't keep up 
the horse breeding that Alexander had at his disposal. They don't have the cavalry to deliver that punch. If you look at the uh, very front to the left, these guys here. Yeah. These are a scout troop. Just next to them, slightly behind, is the elephants. Then behind them, we've got one unit of archers. OK. And just off to the left of them is the uh, Greek generals. Now, apparently, these guys are really handy for things like morale and bolstering people up. But at the moment, they're kind of out on the left, sorry. Yeah, they're, they're with the cavalry at the minute, because they're also on horseback. OK. Raji has recognised the importance of the generals for troop morale. But will the team realise that for the generals to be effective leaders, their positioning during the battle is vital? Then you've got the uh, lightly armoured infantry, these guys with small shields and spears. Yeah. The team's recce of their Egyptian troops has been comprehensive. With these two armies being equally matched, Knowledge of their differences is essential to wage a successful campaign. Would you like some extra help? Would you like to know more about some of your own forces? Have a look at your uh, elephants. Here are some of your key troops at your disposal. Egyptian elephants. Effective against cavalry and close order infantry. Vulnerable to larger Seleucid elephants and light infantry. Right, no, so again. we need to keep them away from the Seleucid elephants and the light infantry. These heavy war elephants are a formidable force when charging at phalanx troops. But the team mustn't forget that because they are so cumbersome, they can be hard to control and manoeuvre. Those elephants can be used cleverly under certain circumstances as sort of big, fat cavalry, but they're not tanks. No. They do not offer firepower. They do not offer much protection. They offer a kind of big, fat mobility. Macedonian pikemen. In close formation, effective in defence and attack. Vulnerable at flanks. So they're only going to be any good going right forward, going well, straight, straight, yeah. straight. Or more importantly, more importantly, we need to cover our flanks and make sure we're not flanked. And yeah. And, and because we're matched yeah. to the other army, their flanks are what we need to be looking at, yeah. what we need to be going for. We need to keep in box formation. Previously, Alexander the Great used the phalanx with their 22-foot pikes to establish his extraordinary reputation and that of the Macedonian Empire. A century later, these two generals, Ptolemy with his Egyptian army and the Seleucids Antiochus, continue to rely on their phalanxes to win battles. Thankfully, the team have spotted their one weakness. Because the pikes that these phalanges carry are so long, they can't turn side to side without knocking their buddies off their feet. As a result, these phalanges, the Macedonian phalanx, is very clumsy. Well, look, I've given you lots of extra help, which the Egyptians uh, never had back then. Now you can get a pretty close-up view of the enemy. Despite the two armies being very similar in size and experience, the Seleucids have come to battle with a few crack units that could cause the celebrities' Egyptians problems. Raji has to send his scouts to spy on the enemy. A dangerous mission. Send them too close and he risks losing. Not close enough and he could miss vital information that could jeopardise the team's entire strategy. Three lots of horses there, yeah? There's cavalry, yeah, and then four lots of... Where's their general? Antiochus himself will be providing heroic leadership, not just command and control. In fact, command and control is not as important to Antiochus as being in the front with what used to be the arm of decision. Because Alexander had been so good with his cavalry, Antiochus is out there with his cavalry. RG Raspids, so that's the pike people. The team have spotted the Ege Raspids. Equipped with 22-foot pikes, they are the elite squadron of the Seleucid army. These highly trained, motivated soldiers are far superior to any of the celebrities' Egyptian phalanx troops. And then you've got front and rear elephants. The Seleucid war elephants are stronger and bigger than their Egyptian counterparts, and in previous battles have always dominated. With the elephants placed on the Seleucid's right flank, the team need to be wary of pitching elephant against elephant. 